posterior lateral approach did better in your hands than those with a lateral approach? Uh, can you hear me, Dr. Uh, Walker? I can hear you, yes. Okay, yeah, I think uh, the reason in my mind is related to the uh, trauma to the muscles, basically, because with uh, posterior oblique approach, honestly, we don't cut any muscle, we don't make any trauma to the muscle, expose the lateral border of PSIS, and then uh, based on the navigation, you can put your uh, all uh, tip tap and then uh, watch it under the stilt and put the make the pilot hole and put the screws in. I believe with the a lateral approach, we go bluntly through the muscle and uh, we make trauma to the muscles. Sometimes it causes bleeding and that bleeds, bleeding causes hematoma. Uh, sometimes the hematoma convert to infection. And then I believe that's the reason for the difference. Okay. And can you talk a little bit about the pitfalls that you can share with the with, audience uh, of the uh, posterior lateral approach, the pitfalls that might- I think the pitfall with, uh, with uh, uh, navigation is pretty, pretty rare because you can see the joint, you can see the foramen and you can put a screw in a precise position. But with fluoro, basically, you have to go multiple inlet, outlet, posterior oblique view, lateral view, to be sure that your screws goes uh, uh, to the right place. I think the pitfall is putting the screw far anterior or not catching the joint if you use, uh, if you use the fluoroscopy technique. As I said, I haven't revised any of my cases. Uh, I have like uh, close to 80 cases now and uh, I'm in the process of publishing my data, uh, but uh, I haven't revised anyone to be able to say that means I put a, uh, a screw in and the patient end up with loosening of the screws that I have to go revise it. I haven't seen my cases, maybe when they went somewhere else, I don't know, but the cases that I follow, I haven't revised any of those. Any other Mo, questions? I, yeah, Mo, I have a question. Um, one of the weak spots I see with that technique is the screws end up in the, probably the least dense part of the sacrum when you look at you know the distribution of Hounsfield units. And um, do you, you when do you do CT? Did you do CT on everyone? No, I did not CT in everyone in some of the cases, but uh, I did a bone density in majority of the cases the patient was older females. And in some of the cases that I do CT, basically I check the Hansfield unit at the bone to look at the bone density. But I don't understand your question that uh, you are telling me with this type of a screw, you are not, because of the angle and the orientation of the screw, you are telling me that you are not able to capture the sacrum properly? Well, we know, that, well, we know that most of the density, um, you know, is anteriorly in S1, which is one of the key places to put an implant. And both of these right. uh, implants that you put in are really in the ala, which tends to be more hollow, uh, less dense bone. And uh, but you say that you don't see that as a problem yet. I have not. You are talking the cases that I showed with navigation, or that the case that I revised. Well, just any case. If if you you're concerned about the quality of the bone where the the screw ends up in the sacrum, it's uh, just a general question. I mean. You know, at least I try to put at least one of my screw at the caudal end of the joint and uh, grab the anterior aspect of the sacrum that uh, the bone is uh, stronger. Okay. So normally in this technique, I use uh, two screws, not three. In one case, I use three, but the majority of cases I use two. You're capturing sometimes the anterior cortex then? Yes, sir. Along the lines of what Jeff just asked, 
Um, with 80 patients, do you have any data now on fusion or stabilization uh, with this device? And the David Polly has um, a little chat question about injuries to the clunial nerve, which is right at the PSIS. Uh, regarding the colonial nerve, I think is uh, the colonial nerve based on the anatomic evaluation is not at the area of the PSIS. It's a little bit caudal to that. And then, as I said, especially with navigation, when you use your perk pin in the contralateral side, and you can locate the area of the incision and you can see the PSIS. And I have not seen any patient to come back with uh, neuropathic time pain related to, to that. Regarding the first question, uh, I have obtained a CT scan for some of my patients after the surgery. Uh, basically, some of the patient, the pain did not get better 100%. So I get a CT scan to look at the loosening of the implant. And uh, I have not seen any loose screws because those screws that I put it in is hollow and I put normally DBM inside the screw. And I have seen when I get a CT scan, the penetration of the bone or the bone graft inside the screw to the patient own bone. But uh, as I said, in this 70, close to 80 cases that I have done, I have not revised any of those, but uh, I haven't done CT scan in all of the patients to look at the bony trabeculation passed through the joint. I have a question, and that is that um, you said that you don't get a CT scan on all of your preoperative patients. How do you uh, accommodate the variation of the extraarticular recess, which is quite large to some people, and it looks like it would be in the area that you're traversing with your screws? Uh, as I said, I'd, uh, I, I get in the uh, CT scan, it's some of them, not all of them. As you know, most of the insurance company cause uh, issue for us to get a CT scan, but uh, in some of the patient, if the patient has, for example, leg length in equality, or the patient has a pelvic obliquity, or the patient has a spinal deformity, or uh, if the patient has a transitional vertebrae in this group of patients, I get a CT scan, and uh, not in all of them. does it occur to you that sometimes these patients will have had other surgery in this area like bone graft harvest or anomalous uh, bone uh, or pedicle screw or something like that, which would interfere with your ability to put a screw there? I think uh, I had one case with uh, harvesting the bone graft that basically instead of, instead of starting at the lateral aspect of PSIS, uh, I have to start a little bit caudally, but uh, for the patient that they had uh, previous uh, lumbar fusion with pedicle screw instrumentation, uh, I did not have any, any cases like that. And in my series, I didn't have any cases that had a previous uh, iliac screws or iliac bolt to be, to be able to say that that interfere with the screw, position, screw placement. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. I think 